Um, so I just, I felt so strongly for her. And I just, I remember feeling like very nervous the first day that I saw her. Um, and she came up to me after class to check in and she was just like, just as resilient as everybody else, you know? <laughs> she just was kind of able to say, it sucks, but it is what it is, you know? Um, and obviously I'm probably not getting all of what she's feeling right now, but um, I don't know. It's, it's just crazy to me that she can come to class <laughs> and, you know, be present and she's still like listening and participating and just, you know, doing everything, so, um, yeah, uh, they've, my students have just been amazing, um, it's, it's really cool to see, uh, how everyone in the, the school's community has been really proactive about, um, doing things and volunteering and donating. Um, there, I remember my first day back after the storm, I was just walking up the stairs. My classroom's on the fourth floor and on the second floor, like the whole floor was covered with like garbage bags of like donated clothes. And um, I mean, it was really nice to see, but it was also sad because I also had to see like kids like picking through the bags for clothes, you know? Um, and uh, so it was, it, it's just been really nice. The school itself has been um, organizing a lot of, you know, relief efforts. Um, and that's just one example of many that I've seen around the city that have just been really um, heartening, you know. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah. Um. Thinking about um, what you were saying about the the relief efforts that people are making, and I wanted to see if you wanted to share some of your efforts. To like, <laughs> um, I just all I keep saying is I wish I had a car because so many of the things that I really had my heart set on doing in the days immediately following required a car. Um, I think there were for most of the efforts being organized, it was to travel to remote areas of, you know, Staten Island that were really hard hit, to travel to Rockaway and Breezy. Um, and, I mean, there were tons of people that wanted to help, but the most helpful thing was to have a car <laughs> that you could bring and actually take people to go help. Um, so I was just, and obviously the MTA wasn't running, so um, you felt, I felt kind of helpless for the first couple of days because I just like so desperately wanted to do something. Um, and I, I'm not in a position to give a lot of money. Um, and I, I preferred, I wanted to feel like I was actually doing something as opposed to just, you know, clicking on a button and saying like, I donated this amount of money. I wanted to like actually be there for people. Um, so I was sort of, I was investigating opportunities to do that, and it was really disorganized for the first couple of days. Um, I mean, I have a friend who was supposed to run the marathon who who ended up volunteering in Staten Island, and she said the exact same thing, that it was so disorganized that at a certain point she had to just sort of up and, like, organize her own thing. And then people started, like, flocking to her. Um, wanting to help. But anyway, um, I was on Twitter. Twitter actually became the most helpful thing to me um, because they were giving really, really up-to-date uh, notifications on uh, what was needed where. Um, I ended up, there's this uh, church nearby that, uh, that, was, that sort of became a hub of relief effort. Um, and they just, they posted on Twitter one afternoon that they really needed uh, food. So I just <laughs> cleared out my cabinet <laughs> and like walked it over there, you know. Um, it wasn't a huge trip, obviously, but I I feel like I did something. Um, and, you know, I'm donating clothing and, and all that. So 
um, I really, I still would like to do a lot more. Um, so I wish I were in more of a position to do more. Um, but yeah. I, I have to say, Twitter was like the most helpful thing in the world, and I think that it it went a long way in making the relief efforts all around the city much more organized. Um, yeah, social media was so key in this whole thing. As much as like we complain about it all the time, it it really, you know, when when something bad happens, it can be like a really powerful tool in, in helping people come together. So. Do you have anything else that you want to add about to to that? Anything else that you want to mention? Anything involving the storm? Um, I mean, you know, the obvious uh, point of comparison would be 9-11. Mm -hmm. um, and people have still been sort of comparing the aftermath of the storm to the period post 9-11, just in terms of the city essentially shutting down and um, all the recouping that the city needs to do. Um, and this is, like 9-11, it's going to be a really, really long process. I think that's the thing that is so surprising and and sad that you still, you know, that there are still people without power, that you still, if you drive around Brooklyn, like the areas in South Brooklyn, like near the water, um, there's still debris all over the place. And right by school, just as an example, there's someone's like brick, this brick, uh, I don't, you can't really call a fence brick, brick fence, but whatever, they have this, um, this brick little wall outside of their house and that got knocked down completely. It's like totally destroyed and um, there's just so much that needs to be done and it's it's just going to take so long. Um, but again, I think when tragedies befall the city, um, I mean, this can be a really isolating city, as many people as there are here and have how on top of each other we live, but when a tragedy befalls the city, um, it's it's just amazing to see how we all unite and even if it's not in an obvious way um there's this there's just like an instant camaraderie that happens just by virtue of being new yorkers 